Welcome back everyone to the second episode of the Central Control Teleprompter Series. Today we're going to be looking at basic operation of the prompter using both the on-screen user interface as well as how we can map external control surfaces for tactile control. Let's waste no time and dive straight in. So we take a look on my screen here. I have the same window you saw in episode one. This is the main teleprompter user interface, which very soon I'm sure you will become very familiar with. We'll start with these buttons and sliders along the top, and then we'll take a look at what else. So we've on the far left, we've got a stop and play button. These indeed seem straightforward enough. However, it's important to know that the stop button actually doubles as your reset button to take you back to the start of your script. So if I click stop once, it's going to stop playback. And if I hit it again, it's going to reset to the top of the script. So a very easy, easy way to navigate back to the start of your script. We discussed in episode one the idea of segments that would allow us to easily navigate around our script. Well, that's what the buttons next to the stop and play button do. They are next and previous segments. So if I click this next segment button, I can easily navigate around next segment, previous segment, and just very easily navigate to different parts of my script. The next button is create trigger. We're not going to get too deep into that today because uh, we will look at automation and the teleprompter in episode four. Now let's look at the sliders. So you'll see across the top here, we've got three different sliders. The first one is dim, and this doesn't dim the entire prompter. What this does is it dims the text that falls outside of our eye line. So it, it may help for me when I'm using the prompter. I like to keep the text uh, outside of my eye line about 50% dimmer than the text that I'm supposed to be reading at that time. It just helps me focus on the prompter. So I can adjust that here. The next one is size. I can change the size at will, pretty much what you'd expect. And then the next one is speed. Very important because without this, how will we stop the prompter running away from the talent or vice versa? Uh, so that is our controls, our main controls at the top of the screen. So I'm going to re-rack again. Now on the left here, you'll see we have another slider that fills the entire height of the screen. This is where we can adjust our eye line. So if we do have dimming on, you'll see even more pronounced. It moves the carrot and where our eye line should be. Uh, and I should mention when we do get into automation, the current line is considered to be where the carrot is. So or this will actually be important to note for automation, which we'll talk about in a later episode. And then on the right here, I do have my uh, nudge up and down buttons. So when the prompter is playing, holding this down just slows it down so I can temporarily slow the prompter. And when it's, and same for nudge down, and when it's not playing, I can just use this to navigate around the script. The other thing a lot of people don't know is when the prompter is in the stop state, I can actually use my scroll wheel to scroll up and down in this script. This isn't possible when I am uh, when the prompter is playing uh, to avoid any undesired uh, skipping in the script just by accidentally moving the mouse wheel. So as I mentioned in the start, we can also use physical control surfaces to control the teleprompter. And the great news about the teleprompter just being another module inside the application is that you can use pretty much any control surface we've got in central control to run the teleprompter. And to illustrate that, I've brought two different types of control surfaces for this demonstration. One is this Elgato foot pedal. And I've been using this in uh, pretty much every video you've seen since the prompter was released to just give me some control of the prompter while I'm on camera. Uh, great for your operators. Also comes with uh, another set of springs that you can use to make it quieter, ideal for a studio environment. And then the other one I've got set up is the uh, X Keys XK12 Jog Shuttle. And we're going to be using this as our prompter operator, uh, their controller. So the person that's in 
control room controlling the prompter. This is going to be their control panel. So how do we set this up? Well, let's dive back into central control, head over to the main window. And like I said, it's entirely modular, so we need to add each device that we're going to be using, starting with the XK12 Jog Shuttle. So I'm going to click Add Device, and then I'm just going to scroll down to PI Engineering, and I'm going to select the XK12 Jog Shuttle. Click OK. And then let's, while we're here, let's get our Elgato Stream Deck pedal added to the project. There it is, Stream Deck Pedal. Click OK, select the right one, great. And now I'm going to enable both of these. And that's done. So in Central Control, uh, devices have uh, controllers, uh, have controls that can then be mapped to commands. And that's done by clicking on the Controls button of the controller we'd like to map. And I'm going to start with the XK12 Jog Shuttle. This is the, the starting uh, configuration for this window. It by default shows us the buttons of the controller, which is great because that's where we're going to start. So as you can see on this, I, I've set this up, and I'll, I'll explain what we're going to do with this. We're going to set the Jog Wheel as our like seat control for easily like scrolling up and down the prompter. Uh, we're not going to use the shuttle. You can map this. I don't really like it for teleprompter operation, but you can use this if you choose to uh, scrub through the prompter. We've got buttons here, which we're going to use to uh, increase and decrease our text size. This is going to be our re-rack button that's going to take us back to the start of the script, as we saw, same, same as um, double-clicking the stop button in the user interface. It's going to be buttons to take us right back to the start of the script. It's going to be previous segment, and this is going to be next segment, so I can easily navigate through my script. Uh, this is going to be stop. I unfortunately didn't have a stop key, so that's what we're left with. And this is going to be play. So now I've got my plan established for how I'm going to map it. We can go back to the um, mapping window. And I'm going to turn on this jump to control feature. And all that does is when I press a button, it jumps that key in the list so I know which which control I'm trying to map. If you have other devices in the prompter, you may, uh, the Google Docs teleprompter might not be the first thing in this list. You may have to select it. And this is where we select the target of what we're trying to map. So like I said, we'll start with, we'll start on the top row and we'll, we'll work our way from that way. So I'm going to press my, um, Decrease the button that we want to be decreased text size, and I'm going to go to text size decrease. Then I'm going to click the plus button, which is going to allow me to map that to the control. So I'm going to take this, click that. Now that has been mapped to that button. I'm then going to press the, we'll do the text increase one. That selected this one, this, this button here, matrix 2-1. So I'm going to select the command Text Size Increase from my available commands list here. Click plus. And now, if I go over to the prompt, you'll see I now have buttons to use that I can easily increase and decrease the size of my text on the teleprompter. We'll go back to the mapping window. We're going to do our reset button. If you remember, it was this one here. This is going to be our reset button. So I'm going to press it so it jumps to that position in the controls list. And I'm just going to click Reset and click the plus button to add the uh, command to that button. Now we'll do Previous Segment, much the same. Select the command, click Plus. Next Segment, there it is. These are sorted alphabetically. Uh, I have already done that. I'm going to do the Stop button next. There's Stop. Now I'm going to do my play button. And that should be all the buttons. So if I start pressing buttons here, you'll see, if we go over to the prompter, if I press buttons, you'll see that as I do, it's taking effect on the teleprompter. Let's just increase the size of that a bit. And I can use these buttons to navigate through my segments. 
the reset button works, sizing, excellent. And you'll see for the stuff like play and pause, the uh, feedback is automatically mapped. So when I press stop, you'll see the stop button lights up and there's no extra mapping required to make the feedback work. It just natively does it. So those are our buttons done, but I said that we were going to use the jog wheel to um, scroll through the prompter. Well, how do we do that? Glad you asked. Take a look back in the user interface. We'll go back to the control mapping button. You'll see in the top left here, it says um, buttons. Now, that's great for everything we've done thus far, but how do we map the jog wheel? Well, that is under encoders. And I'm going to select the jog wheel. That's the control I want. And you'll see the list of available commands changes entirely based on the type of control you're mapping to. So I've got this seek command. That's exactly what I want to scroll. And then I can uh, set in the parameters here, I'm, I'm able to set um, the amount in lines that I want to scroll by. So I'm just going to set it, keep it as one. And now if we look at this, we go over to our split screen. You can see as I move this jog wheel, I can very quickly navigate around through the prompter. And that is the XK12 fully mapped. I'm happy with that. I've got everything I need as the teleprompter operator to operate the prompter. The one thing you may want is uh, some buttons to increase and decrease the speed, or better yet, maybe a, something with a fader or a T-bar that you could map to the uh, speed control for uh, easier control of that. The next thing we're going to look at doing is how we can get our Stream Deck pedal mapped to give our talent some extra control of the prompter. So going back to the central control interface, I can close this mapping window. We are done with this. Close it. Go back to our main window and you'll see the Stream Deck pedal. Press the buttons on there. You can see the controls button blinks to show me that's the one I want to select. So I'm going to click controls and this is vastly more similar. It's just the Stream Deck pedal is, for, for our sake, it's three buttons. Left pedal, middle pedal, right pedal. So what am I going to do with this? I've decided that the way I want to operate this as the talent is I'm going to have the left pedal be nudge uh, up, the right one's going to be nudge down, and the middle one we're going to use as play stop. So like a toggle, hit it once, starts playing, press it again, it stops playing. So let's do the left pedal first. I said that was going to be nudge up, so select that. You will see, actually, I didn't cover this when we mapped the other one, but there is a parameter here that we can set for the nudge amount. And this just essentially sets the sensitivity, so how, how much it's going to nudge by um, when, we, when we push it. I, I really want small adjustments here because, as you'll see in a minute, I'm going to kind of use it to, the prompter's going to be playing, and I'll use these two pedals to just slow it down and speed it up as I need to. So we'll map this, keep that at one. Middle pedal, I said, would be play stop. Fine, no parameters there. Add that. And the right pedal is going to be nudge down. Excellent. So let's take a look at our split screen. So I've got on the table, I'm probably going to be the first person to operate the Elgato Stream Deck pedal using my hands, but nonetheless. So I'm going to start the prompter rolling here. And this, this is my play stop. This is working very well as I expected. And then we've got the left and right, we've got as nudge up and nudge down. So we can press that to nudge up, press it to nudge down. And as I mentioned when we were looking in the on-screen user interface, the, the nudge up and down has an effect when the prompt is playing as well it momentarily increases or decreases the speed of the teleprompter. So if I'm the talent and this is playing and things are going a little bit too quickly for me, I started playing, if it's going a little bit too quickly for me, I could just give a little tap on this, just to slow it down just a little bit, and then when I've caught up and my release, and then maybe it's going too slowly for me uh, or I'm behind, I just need to move it forward a bit, I can push the right foot pedal down 
and that speeds it up just momentarily. So there we go. What have we learned? We've learned how to use the on-screen user interface to have some basic control of the prompter. And then we've looked at how we can use <clears throat> two types of control surface for vastly different purposes to control the teleprompter. Join us next time for part three where we look at output. What good's a prompter if we can't show it to the talent? Well, find out how to do that next time. Thanks for watching.